G'day guys, today we're taking a look at a very low-end thin client from 2010, the Wise VX0. They seem to have released various revisions over the years with slightly different specs, all while keeping the same name. This unit features a VIA Eden single core 1.2 GHz CPU, 512 MB of DDR1 RAM, and a tiny 128 MB IDE disk on module, or DOM for short. The IDE DOMs are similar to 2.5 inch 44 pin laptop hard drives, only with flipped pins and the opposite gender. There's not too many ports on this, but what is there is uh, quite impressive. So on the front you've got a microphone, headphone uh, sockets, a USB 1 port. On the back you've got our DC in, uh, it wants 12 volts 4 amps I believe. You've got PS2 mouse and keyboard sockets, which is pretty handy. A network port, two more USB ports, serial and parallel port, which is uh, pretty cool, and our DVI port. We will be using a cheap passive DVI to VGA adapter, which I picked up on eBay a few years ago for about $2 Australian. Taking it apart is pretty easy. There are two screws on the back, which we have to undo, that one and that one, and the top cover just comes off. There's not too much inside. You've got a single RAM slot, you've got your CMOS battery, which is pretty easy to get to, and to the left of that you've got your IDE DOM uh, slot. Above that is a second unpopulated IDE DOM slot. There are reports of people soldering on a connector and being able to use two uh, IDE DOMs in this. There are also two unpopulated SATA ports down there, and again it is possible to populate them, edit the BIOS, and enable the SATA port so you can have SATA drives working. There's not too much else to see, but there is a few interesting and annoying things worth noting with these units. Certain flash drives do look up certain USB keyboards and mice. I'm not 100% sure on what's causing this, but the easiest solution is to just use an old PS2 keyboard and mouse. When writing bootable images to flash drives, they'll often fail to boot. An easy fix for this is to write any bootable images to flash drives using Rufus and making sure to check the add fixes for old BIOS's box. It does run both FreeDOS and DOS 622 fine, but classic Apogee games graphics are all messed up so it's not really recommended to use it as a pure DOS gaming machine. There's also reports of these being pretty much fully compatible with Windows 98 SE, complete with working video and sound drivers, so we might try and get Windows 98 running on this in a future video. In this video, we'll be running Windows POS Ready 2009, which is essentially just Windows XP from a 160 gig mechanical SATA hard drive over USB. Let's get it put back together and fire it up. Accessing the BIOS is pretty easy. You just have to mash the delete key when it's booting. And the default BIOS password is usually Fireport with a capital F. As you can see, it is fairly fully featured. I don't have the IDE DOM installed in this one. But there is a fair few things you can change. All we'll be doing in this video is booting it from our USB uh, hard drive, which is USB zip. So we'll save and exit. We're on the Windows XP desktop now. And as you can see, I did install the Windows XP 2004 Christmas theme just to get into the holiday spirit. We'll start off with some local media playback. See if you can do XVID 480p. It seems very smooth in person and we've only dropped 20 frames probably from the initial load in. That's uh, pretty good actually. So 480p XVID works. Let's try 1080 XVID. It is struggling with 1080 XVID as you can see. So 1080 is a little bit too much for it. We'll try. MPEG 2 1080 and still unplayable. I doubt it'll do H264 just because of uh, how old it is. We'll try WMV, which it might play. And uh, I'd say that's pretty much unplayable as well. So you're sort of limited to low res XVID videos. Next up, we'll try a few games. This is 3D Lemmings. It is quite choppy as you can see.
I would say this is unplayable. Next up, Holiday Lemmings. That's a bit freaky. It looks like it's uh, crashed in the scariest way possible. Both of these Lemmings games were run in DOSBox, so maybe that's what's uh, causing the issues. Next we have a Wolfenstein 3D Christmas mod. Happy Christmas. Candy canes are a nice touch. This originally came out in 1993, I believe. That's a pretty old mod. I think that's supposed to be Rudolph, but it looks more like a kangaroo. This is a pretty fun little uh, little wolf 3D mod. Last up, we have 12 Days of Doomus, which is, as it sounds, a Doom mod. I'll put it on regular difficulty. I like the Pain Ele Elementals Christmas ball. I am using the keyboard only, by the way, no mouse. Just because the keyboard I'm on, or the mouse I'm on, is a trackball. And I died. Overall, it's certainly an interesting device, but with all of its quirks and issues, I wouldn't recommend getting one. I think I only paid about $3 for this around eight years ago, but I wouldn't recommend anyone paying over $10. As you can see, it does run Windows XP pretty much perfectly. It's a very, very slow single core CPU. It's passively cooled. It does run quite hot. It runs older games okay, but again, the integrated graphics 
does lack a fair bit. As mentioned, people have had Windows 98 SE running on it pretty much flawlessly, so it might be better suited as a Windows 95 or 98 gaming machine. But I think that'll do it for today. I hope everyone's having a happy and safe Christmas. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.